I'm Shasta and I'm an entomologist. You might have been wondering how all of these insects turn up in our insect display and I am about to show you how. So yes, we are going to be talking about how I catch some of the insects that are in our scientific and display insect collection. But as we're also talking about problem solving, I wanted to show you guys some of the best examples of thinking outside of the box that we utilize here in the entomology lab. And this has got to be one of my favorites. This is actually a yard vacuum mounted in an old hiking backpack with a um, what would you call this? An exhaust tube bought from the hardware store to turn it into a hikeable backpack mounted insect vacuum cleaner. I'm not going to put it on in here, but you can picture it's petrol powered. I get my assistant to start it up. It runs, it draws air down through here and I've mounted this sample bag so that the insects are sucked into the bag and then we take the bag off with this hose clamp. The insects are captured inside of here. It's a great way of extracting insects out of the environment that are very small, that cling on really strongly. And when you gather all of those insects off one specific plant, which this is great at targeting, then you have a direct relationship between an insect and its host plant. Whereas if you use some kind of other trap like flypaper where insects fly along and stick on, you know that they've come from an area, but you don't know the plant that they've come from. So that's where this piece of crazy gadgetry gives us a scientific advantage in insect sampling. But there's an even easier, simpler thinking outside of the box that you guys can do right at home. Let me, let me just take this off. So a bug vacuum might sound kind of obvious. You suck insects out of the environment and then you have a sample. But dealing with insects is kind of obvious. They're not incredibly smart. They're not evolving at a fast rate. And so a lot of the technology that we use in entomology is actually very basic. For instance, we use a technique called pitfall trapping. And what you do is out in the environment that you want to sample, and this might be your backyard, you dig a little hole and you wait for the insects to fall in and you have trapped some insects. They're yours now. If you want to make this repeatable, um, if you want to keep your pitfall trap running for a while, what we like to do is put a plastic liner into the pit. And that is as simple as a plastic drinking cup. You can put one inside of the other, push the dirt up to the edge of your cup so that your insects will walk across the surface and fall into the cup. Then in the morning, you can come out, pull out cup number one. This one stays in the hole and you can take a look at what you caught. Now, it's very worth remembering that some insects sting and some insects bite and they will still be alive in the bottom of your cup. So look carefully, maybe do this with an adult if you're uncertain. But because they're still alive, once you're done looking, you can just tip them out on the ground and let them back into your backyard, back out into the environment. So that is taking advantage of the kinds of insects that walk along the ground. It can be spiders, can be ants, can be beetles, but there are lots of different insects and different insects with different behaviors and we can take advantage of some of those as well. So another part of your picnic set at home, we've used our plastic drinking cups and now we're going to use our brightly colored picnic bowls. I've got yellow but you could experiment with blue or orange or black, whatever color you happen to have. And if I was a bee or a butterfly, this looks like a great big flower as far as I'm concerned. So if you set these out on the ground on a sunny day, 
pollinators are going to think they've hit the jackpot and found the biggest flower they've ever seen. And they're going to be attracted to it, fly down and land on it. And then you have the perfect opportunity to take pictures with your camera, to get up close and have a look at them whilst they're confused by your very clever insect trap. And this is called yellow pan trapping. And like I said, you can experiment to see how different colours work, different times of the day, different temperatures. There is lots of things that you can do with a plastic picnic plate and your thinking outside of the box attitude in your backyard this summer.